I think what everybody wants to know is how do you go from a sketch on a napkin to something that looks like this? Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boatworks. Let's get to work. Come on to the Boatworks. Let's see what's going on. This episode is the final one in a series about how I built an epoxy table for the cockpit of my Albin 27. You know, we have a lot of different projects that I'm working on inside the Boatworks, and some of them have to do with the Skipper 20 trailerable sailboat, and some of them have to do with the Albin 27 family cruiser that's behind me. I know a lot of people are interested in the sailboat or they're interested in the trawler and they don't really see how the two boats go together. I get a lot of people telling me that I should just have a YouTube channel that focuses on one type of boat or another. Welcome to Motor City Boat Works! Why would you limit yourself to one or the other when the real pleasure just comes from messing about with boats? How do you go from a sketch on a napkin to something that looks like this? Sailboat, trawler, RV. Trust me, this is a project that anybody can do. If you've been watching my channel, you'll know that I've made some modifications to my pocket trawler. One of the things that I've done is I've changed the configuration to the forward cabin. It used to contain a V-berth, the galley, a head, and even a small dinette. Everything was kind of cramped together on top of itself right next to the bathroom. I ended up taking out some bulkheads and enlarging the bathroom, I completely removed the dinette. What this means is that now there's no place to sit and eat a meal on the boat. So I've decided to turn the cockpit area into a three season type of room. I've gone ahead and I've put a hard top covering the cockpit area and now I'm in the process of designing an epoxy table that will go in the center of the cockpit. It'll be a great place to sit and have dinner and maybe a few drinks while the sun sets. My original plan was nothing more than a sketch on a napkin. My table had a couple of design parameters that I needed to follow. Based off of my experience cruising in the Netherlands, I realized that the table really only needed to be about about 18 inches by maybe two feet wide. In addition, the table had to have an adjustable leg. The height needed to be adjustable up and down, and the table needed to be able to be rotated as need be. It also had to be removable. There would be times when the table needed to be put away and not even present in the cockpit. I wanted to make something that was kind of nautical and a little bit decorative, and perhaps had a nautical chart with some teak trim. I'm always trying to keep things light on my boat and I want them to be waterproof and easy for maintenance. So I decided to make the table out of half inch PVC foam board. This is basically a rigid plastic. You can check out my playlist on Kusa board and composite boat building. Now we all know I'm not much of a carpenter, so I want to keep the teak trim as simple as possible. None of my boat restorations would be complete without some parts that I got from Earl the Pearl. If you're not familiar with Earl the Pearl, make sure you check out my episode on the secret boat parts warehouse here in the Detroit area. Hidden in one of the corners of his 14,000 square foot shop, I was able to find some round teak trim and some teak board stock that I could route down and use for the cockpit table. With the materials gathered, now I'm ready to start construction. The first step is to cut the PVC foam board into the shape of the tabletop. The teak trim is comprised of a top half and a bottom half. They're routed one quarter of an inch to fit halfway on a half inch piece of PVC foam board. The next step is to dry fit the corner trim pieces to get an idea of how much teak we need to make up the top, bottom, and sides. We cut the straight pieces of teak to length and then use a one quarter straight router bit to cut the groove in the teak trim. What I'm basically trying to do is match the profile of the pre-bought teak corner pieces. Oh yeah, YouTube artisanal wood shavings. Motor City Boat Works has no sponsors and I get no compensation from any of the companies or the products that I sometimes mention 
on my channel. However, in the description, I sometimes put links for Amazon where you can find some of the tools or items that I'm using in the restoration of my boat. Amazon does provide a small commission if you use those links. So this morning, I'm going to be gluing together the teak trim pieces for the cockpit table. They basically come in two halves, the, the corners and their side rails. And they've got to be glued together so that I can later on get them to fit properly and tight around the dimensions of the cockpit table. And we'll glue them together with some epoxy resin mixed with teak dust. Normally you would make these out of one piece of teak and just cut the groove in them, but I, uh, I don't have raw material to do that, so I'm using this other technique here, which I think will look fine. Gluing the teak halves together is done using my teak repair technique. I use West System Epoxy mixed with some teak dust. It's dust that I've saved from other woodworking projects. And why am I doing this? Because it makes it a little bit darker and when you sand it, it should blend in and if nothing else, it'll look only like maybe a tiny little crack or a scar if it's done properly. I actually mixed a second batch of epoxy with teak dust. The first batch, the way I was mixing it when I said I wanted to go to a thick applesauce is actually too thick. It's too granular. It's not fine enough. And it caused the, uh, a little bit of space between the seam. And you don't want that. You want, the, you want it to fill with a liquid epoxy. So a little bit of teak dust to give it some color. And uh, it should look basically like that. Once the teak trim is all glued and sanded, set it aside. And now it's time to start working on the tabletop itself. Now, one of the things you need to know is a little history about this boat that I've been building. There were about 500 Albin 27s made. It's kind of an unusual boat in that it has a forward and an aft cabin, a galley, a head, a V-berth and a center covered cockpit area. All this crammed into 27 feet with a shoal draft, full keel, and a single diesel engine. I bought my Albin 27 in August of 2014. I had just gotten married. It was less than one month later. I knew this boat was going to occupy a tremendous amount of my time. It was going to follow me all the way through the last years of my day job and well into my retirement. I warned my wife ahead of time this was going to be a monumental project. My wife teaches French. And she lived in France for a number of years. And she was the one who came up with the name for the boat. Now in the boat works, we never refer to a boat unless it's been officially commissioned. So while the boat may have a name on its transom, we never say it out loud. It's a French term and it means a woman who flirts with you. A woman who occupies your time and your mind and all of your thoughts consuming you as you try to win her love. I tell you all this because now you can imagine why we might travel to Brittany, France in search of some items to put onto the tabletop of my Alban 27. At the La Rochere du Corsair, I found the chart that I would use. And one Sunday at a brocant market in Danan, I found some antique photographs and postcards that match the chart. The chart is an unusual one because it covers the Ile Le Long. This is one of the most secretive and special places in all of France. Ile Le Long is where they keep the French nuclear ballistic submarines. It's a guarded national secret. It's so secret that in 2005, the French government asked Google Earth to remove the satellite images showing the location. And those images are no longer available to Western countries. The chart, the photographs, the postcards, these would be the items that I would inlay in epoxy in the cockpit table. All right, today we're gonna to mount the chart to the tabletop. It's PVC foam board, this is the chart. We've gone ahead and coated it with a clear coat so that it won't absorb liquid. And uh, both sides, we're gonna take this and mount it using spray adhesive to the tabletop. 
once it sets up, it's nice and flat, then we'll come back and trim the edges so we can begin putting the frame on. Let's see how this works here. Remember to coat the chart and any of the paper products with some form of clear coat so that they don't absorb any epoxy. What do you think about that? What do you think? Not bad, huh? Set up if it can be okay. Once the chart is attached to the tabletop, now it's time to go ahead and attach the teak trim. I use thickened epoxy and bar clamps to pull everything in tight so that later on when I sand everything, hopefully the teak will look seamless. Once everything sets up, now I can begin sanding. This is a very delicate process. It, I pay particular attention to the outer edges to make sure everything is smooth and flush. I tape off the chart first so that I don't accidentally abrade it when I'm sanding on the inner surfaces. If it's done properly, the teak should appear as one piece, even though it may have different wood grain. If you're enjoying this episode, would you do me a favor? Hit the like button and maybe leave a comment below. I invite you to subscribe. And if you really want to help out the channel, well, please consider leaving a donation on Patreon. This channel would not be possible without your support. It's at this point that I apply several coats of Cetol Marine coating to the teak wood. I haven't poured the epoxy yet. I'm preparing the wood so that everything is ready to go and the epoxy will be one of the last things that I do. First project this morning is I'm going to be attaching the laminated postcards to the top of the tabletop. All right, you can kind of see here I've got everything laid out in the way that I like it. And we'll be spraying these one at a time and then tacking them down. What's interesting about the antique postcards is that they're real photographs of the terrain surrounding Ile Le Long. Since the late 1960s, you're no longer able to take photographs of the surrounding area or the shoreline. So these antique postcards and photographs are a great historical record. In fact, on the back of one of the postcards, we discovered a letter from a French soldier to his girlfriend. The letter was written almost one year after the armistice for World War I, and the soldier is returning home. He's traveling along the French coastline. He encounters all manner of difficulty, but he continues to make his way towards her. So what we're going to do is we're going to be doing the epoxy bar top pour on the cockpit table here. I've got the cockpit table laid out. Everything has been attached using spray adhesive. We've got the trim, the teak trim, all varnished, ready to go. And we're gonna be doing an epoxy pour to basically fill up this depth, maybe 3 16 or a little bit less. When you do one of these pours, you don't wanna do more than quarter inch at thickness at a time because it generates too much heat. When the epoxy mixes with the, the, the hardener, it generates heat from the chemical reaction. And if you have too much thickness on your pour here, as it heats up and then cools, well, it'll crack and you'll have, a, uh, you'll have an imperfect surface. It won't look right and it'll be all messed up. So don't do more than a quarter inch at a time. We're not gonna even come close to that because this thickness is not even a quarter of an inch. We just want to do enough to ensure that everything is completely encased in fiberglass. It's all good to go. So what we're gonna do is, this is approximately 17 by say 24 inches wide. And what we have to do is mix up 
and pour enough epoxy resin using the special 207 clear hardener to fill this thing up. So how much we need? Well, there's a special formula that you use to kind of compute how much epoxy you need. What? And my guesstimate right now is that we're somewhere going to be somewhere between 40 to 50 ounces of finished mixed uh, epoxy resin. So what does this mean? Let's talk about how this works. The first thing we need to know is how much epoxy resin covers a given space. Now this information is for the West System epoxy using the 207 clear hardener. One fluid ounce of mixed resin and hardener will cover 1.8 cubic inches. The first thing we need to do is determine the volume of our project. It's 17 by 24 inches. And if we want a 3 16 inch pour, that's going to be times 0.1875 inches. This gives us 76 and a half cubic inches of space that we have to cover. We take that number and we divide it by the 1.8 cubic inches. And it gives us 42 and a half fluid ounces. That's the total epoxy resin, hardener and resin mixed together. So... Well, we can't do that in a big enough container. The container will heat up too fast and we might have some type of a exothermic reaction causing the epoxy to kick off faster than we want it to. So we're gonna do this in several pours, but we're gonna do it in the several pours immediately right after each other, basically as fast as possible. Probably 10 to 12 ounces at a time, which is 10 to 12 pumps for the resin and then for the special hardener. It's very similar to what we did on the production table when we made that. Hopefully we won't have the same mistakes because we've got better adhesion here, all the corners are down, and if we're lucky, we'll have enough resin material to cover this entire thing. All right, here we go. It, it, will, it will level using gravity. Make sure it touches all the way around the edges. You know, I make these videos because I think there's some nuances to some of these boat projects that aren't often shown on YouTube. Here's a great example. If you're not careful using your heat gun to get the bubbles out of the epoxy, you run the risk of warming it up and having it cook off too fast. Terrible. It will actually get burned. The force of the heat gun will actually make waves and it'll solidify too fast. It's a bonehead mistake. But have no fear. I always say wood is good, but fiberglass is forgiving. Go back with some sandpaper, sand it down smooth, and do another pour to level everything out. At this stage, the secret to getting the bubbles out is a little bit of light sanding, and then I coated everything with some Helmsman's varnish. It really smoothed everything out. This project's been going on for several weeks. Man, I hope today we have a moment of completion. The stand for the cockpit table was something that I chose off of Amazon. They come in a variety of options, polished or brushed aluminum. Some of them are stainless steel. I chose a surface mounted leg because there's not a lot of room below deck to mount the base. The fuel tank in the Alban 27 is right underneath the cockpit area. And the moment of completion is important. Why? Because that's the whole point of the project is to see what it is you're doing. What happened? What was the result? And the reason no one shows the moment of completion is because it's extremely difficult to film it, to schedule it, to time it with your YouTube channel. Because you film all this footage and you have to wait for the project to be completed. And, you know, every week you got to put out content. So every week you got to be hustling to get stuff done. Well, the reason people don't show the moment of completion is because they haven't actually completed a project. They're just grinding away on fiberglass and they never really show the outcome until maybe they do a video down the road where they say, oh, here, here's eight months of work in two minutes. But we don't do that. We show the moment of completion. We show the results. You can judge for yourself whether or not the project was a success. And we try to be honest about the lessons learned and anything that, you know, 
we would change differently if we had to do it again because a lot of this is learning new skills, practicing how you do things. Pleased with this. Uh, this was a purchase off of Amazon. I'll put the link on the show description, but it's really quite good quality. And I think it's going to work exceptionally well. And then we have this. Look at this nice piece of. Look at that. That's pretty good, man. Put it down. goes up. Look at that. I think we need to go on the boat now and try this. What do you think? I don't know, man, what do you think? I, I think it came out pretty well. I'm very happy with it. We can adjust the height as need be. Well, I think that's the end of the epoxy cockpit table. I'm really impressed with how it came out. I think this is gonna be a really nice feature and we're gonna get a lot of use out of it when we do some long-term cruising. There's only one thing left to do and that's to celebrate. A job well done. <sighs> Finally, some success. I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Stay motivated. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. These videos would not be possible without your support.